and in this section we are going to take a brief introduction to docker as a software what it is what it can do how you can use it we are going to get introduced to the basic commands and tools that we are going to use throughout the projects that we are going to build throughout this class okay so let's first have a quick overview over infrastructure evolution long ago you had to buy a separate hardware machine for every application in your environment for example if you are to build an application that is going to be hosted on the web you'll have to have a web server an application server and a database server all of those were hosted on physical hardware machines that was a big waste of resources as you always had to buy servers with high computation power usually more than what the hosted applications might need later on virtual machines were introduced only one powerful server can be used to host the application stack on virtual machines this approach also had its drawbacks there had to be a complete os on each virtual machine this os had to consume resources that could be availed for the application instead additionally it required backup patching and monitoring let alone licensing portability was another drawback moving virtual machines among different hypervisors or migrating them to cloud platforms was not an easy task for those reasons the concept of containers was brought to attention a container is like a virtual machine however it does not need a complete operating system of its own multiple containers can share a single os this frees up lots of resources that can be used by the application containers are very fast to boot very easy to move from one platform to another like from your laptop to the cloud to a virtual machine or even to a bare metal machine the technology itself is not a new one it's been used long ago in unix in the form of bsd jails solaris zones and other forms of container virtualization however at that time it was used only by major corporations like google docker made linux containers available to everyone docker made the technology easy and reachable for everyone not just big corporations docker containers were mainly linux based but recently microsoft managed to bring containers to windows server 2016 and windows 10. so what is docker exactly docker is an application used to create and manage containers docker can be thought of as the hypervisor responsible for managing and orchestrating the virtual machines which are called containers there are two main versions of docker the open source one which is part of the mobi project on github and the commercial one developed and maintained by docker incorporated most of docker code is written in the go language a relatively new systems programming language invented by google so that was a brief introduction to docker as a whole what it is how it is different than virtual machines and how it can be useful in deploying applications in the coming lecture we are going to start installing docker on our operating systems on different operating systems we are going to start with windows then we are going to move on to mac os and linux so until next lecture take care right so in this lesson we are going to start installing docker on our windows machine and because docker is a relatively new adoption to microsoft products it has been recently added to microsoft windows as a component or as an installable program docker does not work except on windows version 10 pro enterprise or education 1607 update build 14.393 or later you will need to enable the hardware virtualization on your cpu and this can be enabled in the bios settings this is a hardware setting that needs to be enabled and you will also need to have at least 8 gigabytes of memory in order to be able to run docker containers and last hyper v component must be enabled in windows 10 but don't worry if you do not know how to enable this docker will attempt to enable it during installation so let's get started with downloading the installer package so i'm gonna open microsoft edge here and i'm going just to type download docker for windows 
Okay, and go to the link on Docker domain and click on install Docker for Windows. We have the stable channel and the edge channel. The stable channel, I personally recommend it. It always contains code that has been tested thoroughly and is ready for production. The edge channel contains experimental features that are not guaranteed to work in each and every scenario. So I'm gonna get Docker for Windows, the stable edition. Okay, I'm gonna start to download it. Okay, the file has been downloaded. Let's open it and press yes. And while the installer is installing Docker Community Edition on our Windows machine, let's have a quick discussion of the different versions of Docker that are available. We currently have two editions or two main editions. The first one is the Community Edition and that is the one that is available by default for Windows and Mac OS machines. This is the free version. You don't have to pay anything to use this version, but it is, as the name suggests, a community edition. This means that the support, okay, let's look, close the logout. The support that is offered by this edition is the community one. You don't have an official support from Docker. The other edition, which is the enterprise edition, it's only offered for Linux as of the time of this recording. And this version includes official support from Docker Incorporated. Okay, so now Docker has been installed for Windows, as you can see from this icon. And if you go here at the tray, okay, you're gonna see that Docker is starting. If you go here at the tray, you're gonna see that we have the Docker icon here. And okay, Hyper-V and containers features are not enabled. We have mentioned this in the prerequisites. I will ask Docker to enable them automatically for me and restart. These are components that must be enabled on Windows 10 in order for Docker to be able to function correctly. And actually Hyper-V and the containers features on Windows 10 are what enables you to have a Linux kernel under Windows. Okay, and here we are inside after the restart. And as you can see here in this icon, Docker is starting. It's gonna take a few seconds to start. And once it is started, you can just open the PowerShell. And run Docker version. And if you have this output, then Docker is successfully installed on your Windows machine. That brings us to the end of this lecture. In the coming lecture, we are going to start installing Docker on a Mac machine. So until then, take care. Okay, installing Docker for Mac is very easy. Actually, it is the easiest one. You can just go to store.docker.com slash editions slash community slash docker dash ce dash desktop dash Mac and click on get docker. I'm gonna press okay to download. Once downloaded, just double click on it like this. And as with any application in installation on the Mac, you just drag and drop the application in the applications folder like this. And then you can start it by just double clicking on the icon, next. It's gonna need privileged access, so I'm gonna press OK, give it the password. It's gonna take a few moments to start, just the same thing as we did with Windows. Okay, it's up and running. Let's open a terminal window, and if we run Docker version, you're gonna see that we have client version 17.12 and the engine version 17.12 and they are running on the OS architecture Linux AMD64. This means that you can run containers that are based on the Linux kernel. You cannot run containers based on Windows, for example, because this is not supported on a Mac machine. As a matter of fact, you can currently run only Docker containers that are based on Windows kernels on Windows machines, Windows Server 2016 or Windows 10 Pro, with the minimum versions we mentioned at the previous lecture. Now that we have installed Docker on Windows and on the Mac, let's see how we can install it on a Linux machine. We're gonna start by Ubuntu and then 
move on to CentOS. So let's open a terminal window. Okay. And first thing we need to do is to enable the apt package manager to download packages over the HTTPS. So I'm going to type sudo apt get install apt dash transport dash HTTPS CA dash certificates and curl, which is also needed and software dash properties dash common. Next command, let's clear the screen, is the command that we are going to use to add the GPG key for authenticating the Docker installation package. So it's going to be done like this, https downloaddockercom slash linux slash ubuntu slash gpg pipe to sudo add key add dash. Okay. Then finally, we are going to add the repository itself. Sorry, I forgot a dash here. Okay. Now, we are ready to add, we are ready to install the application, the package. So let's run sudo app get update to update the repositories that we have now. And let's run sudo apt get install docker dash ce which is the community edition the one that we are going to deal with throughout this class okay now docker has been installed successfully let's clear the screen and if you try to run docker version with your user you're going to see that you have only half of the expected output just the client you don't have the server output that is because you are using the local user account or the non-privileged account you will have to use sudo docker version in order to get the full picture in order to get the client and the server and docker can be actually and it is recommended to be run by a non-root user but in order to do this you will have to add this user to the docker group so i'm gonna use sudo user mod dash a g capital docker and the username that I want to add, which is Ahmad, the current user. And in order for this to take effect, I must log out and then log back in by going to this and clicking log out. Then click on my name and log in back again. Now let's open the terminal again. And now if I type docker version without using the sudo, command I am getting the expected output, the client and the server. Let's do the same thing on our CentOS machine. Okay, let's open the terminal. And the first thing we might need to do is to install the prerequisite packages that are required to install Docker. So sudo yum-y install yum-utils device mapper persistent data and LVM2. Okay, and it seems that the, the CentOS is still fetching automatic updates. Let's kill this process. Okay. Okay, now the prerequisites have been installed. Next, let's add the Docker repository. So sudo yum dash config dash manager dash dash add dash repo. Then the URL of the docker repository download.docker.com slash linux slash centos slash docker dash ce dot repo this is the repository that is going to be used for installing docker now once done you are all, you are all set to install docker by using yum dash y install docker ce and again the version that we are going to use throughout this class is the community edition so it's docker ce okay now docker has been installed successfully start the service by running sudo service docker start then sudo 
Docker version. Okay, now we have the client and the server versions. The same thing we did with the Ubuntu. And again, if you want to run Docker with the non-privileged account, and it is recommended to do so, you have to add this user account to the Docker group. And you will need to log out and log in back again. So I'm going to do just that. Okay, now let's go back to our terminal and running Docker version without the root privileges is going to give me the expected output. This means that I can successfully run Docker as a non-privileged user. That brings us to the end of this lecture. In the coming lecture, we are going to start actually working with Docker, where we are going to give it a test drive to see what exactly it can do for us. So until then, take care.